Hi, Jacqueline Timmer here, founder and director of the American Voters Alliance, formerly known as Got Freedom, and host of the Main Street Podcast. I am here in the Main Street studio, and as many of you know, uh, we have temporarily put production on hold due to a number of other projects that the team and I are working on. However, in our regularly scheduled slot with USLA, coming up right now, uh, we are filling that place with my dad's podcast, First Principles. My father is former Kansas Attorney General Phil Klein. He is a law professor at Liberty University and director of the Amistad Project. So I'm sure that you will enjoy his podcast. Sometimes I co-host with him as well. So we'll be bringing that to you while we wrap up some of the projects on um, the ABA and Main Street side. And we'll be back with you shortly. So enjoy First Principles. Hi, this is Phil Klein, and welcome to First Principles. You know, the United States experience is but an eye blink in human history. And the history of humankind is really the history as it relates to political science of the tyranny of government against the individual, not the tyranny of the individual against government. And right now, the American experience is under threat. It's under threat because there are collectives. There are groups using identity politics. Identity politics meaning that your rights are dependent upon whether you're a part of a favored group or not, rather than inherent rights granted by God as articulated in our Declaration of Independence. But there are collectives. There are groups of people who believe that they need to manage every aspect of your life, and specifically right now, there is a direct aim on your economic independence, as well as your thought and conduct. But today, we're going to focus on your economic independence and how COVID fear has been used to forward the interest of those who desire an authoritarian government, a centralized managed economy, and who see economic freedom as a threat to their view of America. Today, I'm, I have the pleasure of interviewing Marlena Pavlos Hackney. And in introduction, I'm going to first identify what her state government, how her state government officials view her. And then I will speak about who she is and we'll engage in a conversation together to understand what her view of America is, what her concerns about the direction of America are based upon her past experiences. This is a, a news release dated March 19th, 2021, this year, from the Attorney General of Michigan, Dana Nessel. And she's touting the actions of her office. And she states in her news release, Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel announced the arrest today of Marlino Pavlos Hackney, the owner of Marlino's Bistro and Pizzeria, in Holland, Michigan. Pavlos Hackney has continued to willfully violate state food laws, public health orders, and a court-ordered temporary restraining order. She was picked up and arrested at 5.45 a.m. after a traffic stop without incident. Marlena, welcome to the show. I, I have this question for you. This is your state government, and this is their view of you. What do you say to that? I say that the governor and general attorney, they impose all those rules and executive orders without the, um, I don't know how to describe with all the authority. They don't have no authority to impose those rules and regulations. I didn't break any law. I'm a citizen who follow the rules and laws like every other, but the executive orders don't allow the small business owners to able to produce goods and produce income so we can live. This is unconstitutional, unlawful, unacceptable. So that's why I decide to step 
and take control of me. I'm a woman who's got the rights to work and provide for myself. I now, didn't require. Marlena, I respond to them because this this news release goes on and says that you're a dire threat, that you you are bringing great risk to all your fellow Michiganders by keeping your restaurant open. What do you say to them about that? Well, I respect everyone's thoughts, you know, because I have a people who don't participate in my doings. I did have a sign on my door that I did say that I'm constitutionally complying business. I don't interfere with anyone doings. I do not follow any suggestion that the government imposed and your health is your responsibility. So I left open to the people to decide because every human being is in control of his body and mind. So I respect the one who wear mask. I respect the one who follow the distancing. I expect respect the one who go and take vaccination is your body, your call. But at the same time, we the people, we gonna decide what we gonna do and we in the control of us not the government. The government don't have the right to control what we're going to do, how we're going to live, if we're able to work, and so on. You know, it's it, I, I have a little smile on my face because you said something that is surprising to me, but I believe it is considered radical today, and that is you are responsible for your own health. And that's, that's how we find ourselves if we are to be a free nation. Now, you you sacrificed to come here. You risked a lot to come here. You are a native of Poland, 1988. We are dealing with Soviet domination over Poland. There is not this freedom in Poland. Tell me about that. Tell me about why you were willing to leave all that you had in Poland to touch these shores in America. The reason I left Poland, because I escaped communism. I don't want it to live under communist regime dictatorship, which I experience. I will have to have more time to explain and, you know, so people will understand what the life look like. But I escaped communism and my dream was come to America, the country that is freedom, place of opportunities that we can work and produce goods. We don't have to have nothing, but if you work hard, you're able and capable to become something. And I always work all my life, two jobs, and I'm grateful that I'm able to do and able to have my business. But at the same time, now being business owner, I cannot allow the government, the governor, to take my private property away from me. I work so hard and I will do anything to just keep going and be able to hold on to it. And what the government does, they want to take us constitutional protected rights away from us. They want to dictate, just like communist regime, what we can do, what we cannot do. The way it looks like we don't going to have enough income to be able to pay like property taxes and so on. So they can take us property away, just like they did in Poland. They want everything to become socialist, that the government is going to be the owner. And we have to follow them rules and regulations. Now, you were 18 when you fled Poland. And what similarities do you see or do you see any um, in Poland at the time and in the United States today? What I'm seeing right now is the same thing. This is just the beginning. The dictatorship. The government wants to control navigate and tell us what we can do, what we cannot do. We cannot allow this to happen because if we're going to give the government the rights to control us, lives is going to be really bad because we don't going to have no rights. So that's why America has to stand up and fight for the unalienable rights that the God give us and we are have a constitutional protected rights that we have to make sure that they will be in place. We cannot allow the government to take those right protected constitutional rights away from us. And now, how, how do your neighbors respond? And, and are you sharing this? Are they responding? Are they standing up with you? 
my neighbors? Yes. Well, depends. Uh, you know, people are on different side, different part. So one, they agree with the government doings and one don't. So, you know, I leave up to the people. Everyone's got the choice, you know, to believe what they like to believe. But we, the people, we should express what is right and what is wrong. I'm not going to criticize nobody's belief, but I'm going to express my belief that we should stand up and fight and do things right. Are you, is your restaurant open now? No. I'm closed because, as you know, I have a warrant for my arrest. They arrest me. I was in jail for four nights and five days. Um, to be able to get out from jail, I have to comply, which means close my business. Uh, they give me 93 days. If I will not comply, it will be 93. And if I'm going to be able to get out after 93, it will be another 93 days. So I don't have no choice. So I you, have were to told, you were told you would be in jail. I was in jail. Perpetually. For, you would continue yes. to remain in jail unless you closed your business. Yes. Are they going to allow you to open your business back up? At this moment, as you know, all the mandates has been lifted in Michigan. So it's no rules and my, uh, mandates that will, you know, don't allow me to open. So I'm in the process right now with the health department to schedule my uh, pre-inspection. Uh, I have to contact MDAR because they are the one who uh, give me sys and desist, and they are the one who, you know, uh, impost all this, uh, you know, hocus regulations. Hocus, yeah, regulation. So and I then, contact- And MDAR, I'm sorry, Helena, MDAR is the Michigan Department of- Agriculture. Agriculture. Yes. So you have to comply with them you you you're gonna have to have an inspection or yes the, then resp then response was when i sent them email that i have to contact back with health department because they are in my jurisdictions you see when they take me to jail that's another uh issue they don't have no rights to come and arrest me from inham inham county to my county without the sheriff approval i contact the sheriff uh, from Allegan because my business is in Allegan and I try to talk to him. He never called me back. That's another disrespectful aspect from authority official that doesn't protect his own residence. I have the assistant of counsel, which was Rick Martin, which he spent 35 days in jail. I bring him from Texas to represent me, but as you know, they did not allow because he's not a bar attorney. So they take him to jail, but before they take him to jail, he go and he talk to the sheriff in Allegan County. He asked him specifically to protect me because that's his duty and obligation to us residents, which the sheriff response was he will not arrest me but he will not stop the state police if they will come and enforce my arrest okay let me let me shift to there for a second because um you you had opened up i believe for a few months before you were arrested and you were only arrested after it came to the attention of the attorney general that you were going to go on fox news and criticize the government and I want you to respond to something. I'm looking at an email from the Attorney General of Michigan to her staffer, an assistant attorney general, who informed her that you were going to be on Tucker Carlson's show. And here is her email. She states, do we know where Helena's whereabouts? We should have her picked up before she goes on television. This is outrageous. Let me ask you. Do you think that you were arrested because you were speaking out against this or were you arrested because you were a health threat to Michigan? Probably both because as you know, I escaped communists and the government we have in Michigan represent communist regime. All the doings, what they're doing, this is exactly what they do. 
they try to take us rights away and government and government agency, they have to uphold the act of office to protect the constitution. In the constitution, I don't see the law that say that I'm not allowed to work and provide for myself. So if they don't follow the constitution, that is the act of treason. So because I speak my mind, they don't like that. So they try to take a speech away. What's going on in this country? This is exactly what happened in my country. You're not allowed to speak. You're not allowed to go and pray. They want to destroy the constitution. They wanted mandates and dictates, even like I went to court. Both judges who held my court, my hearings, they don't follow the law do of process. I mean, anybody, some... Has anybody at your restaurant been hospitalized from being at your restaurant for COVID to your knowledge? Uh, what I hear from the health department, I didn't see no proof. This is just, you know, show me the facts, not just speculation that someone came to my restaurant and two days after he was in my restaurant that he's got COVID. I don't know. I never see any paperwork. This is just stipulation. And they've if never, someone... I'm sorry, they've never mentioned anything else but that claim. No. And I have many people who will call the health department and complain about me being open. But like I told you, I have a sign on my door, which everyone who will come, they were aware of how I operate my business. All I right. don't. In- I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry, because I don't want to repeat the same stuff. What, um, what advice do you have for the American people based on your experience? I have to say, America, we have to stand up. We have to fight for us freedom. We have to make sure that every government and government agency who are us servants, they should protect us. And we the people, we have the power. So if the government, general attorney, the sheriffs, the police, if they don't uphold the oath of office and they don't protect us, you know, the constitution that we have is something wrong. We cannot allow this happen because we have to make sure America will be free. America will be great. That will be have prosperity, that we will have jobs and we will be one nation, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Marlena, if people want to learn more about your story, is there a place they can go on the internet? Well, you can go on my uh, Marlena's Bistro and Pizzeria uh, Facebook. They can go down and they can probably see what happened, you know, to me and read about uh, about communists uh, in Poland. You know, they have to go like a little bit further down. But I describe so they can really read the history about Poland, about the communists, because I have a like nice link so they can you know, understand better than, you know, uh, my English is not the best, it's broken English. So, uh, you know, it's hard for me to describe and I will have to have more time to say what I would like to say, but I know it's timing. So, but they can go on my Malena's Bistro and Pizzeria Facebook and they can kind of go look through and see what happened and so All on. Right. And I, I would request We're going to keep in touch with you. We want to know when you're open back up. I'm Uh, assuming I will reopen in a couple of weeks because, uh, you know, I have to get my people back. Some people left because some people, they're afraid, you know, with all this uh, rules that uh, government impose, $500 for mask, then whoever don't going to follow from 200 to 1000, jail time up to a year and so on. I mean, was so, you know, unreal that government don't have the authority and they, you know, decide to put those suggestions and mandates and put fear in every human being. So we will follow because as you see, they picked me as an example. So no one will do the same thing, but I'm a fighter. I will not give up and I will do what will text to make sure America and American people will be free and to expose all the corruptions that is going on in the government and the politicians. 
I don't care either one party or another. Many of them, they, cor they are corrupt. The legislations, they should do something before anything happened. They should change all the rules and laws. But as you see, things are not the way it should be. So we, the people, we have to stand up, take control, Thanks, God, to all the patriotic group, to Stand Up Michigan and our others that they are doing and acting and do the movements because it takes one to follow. So I would like to say God bless America, God bless you all, and God bless every uh, patriotic group that helps to fight for freedom, that America will be free and great again, and we expose all the dirt and wrongdoings because what happened right now what is bad become good and what is good become bad and that's something wrong with these pictures because god he's the creator of this earth he created this earth he gave us equal rights to use this land not the government the government is a servant they should protect us and what they're doing they they try to destroy the country they look for themselves for the politic power. And we have to make sure that God will protect us and the country will prosper and will be America free and great again like before. All right, Marlena, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your stand and Godspeed to you. And we look forward to being in Holland, Michigan and ordering from the menu of Marlena's Bistro and Pizzeria. God bless you, man. Thank you for joining us. God today. bless you. And thanks for having me on your show. You bet. Thank you. And we are going to continue our discussion now. And I'm going to bring in Jacqueline Timmer. And so that uh, all of you viewers know, Jacqueline is my daughter. She is the founder of God Freedom and also of the American Voters Alliance. And Jacqueline uh, is, is listening in to Marlena. And I want, to, I want Jacqueline to share some of her experiences as she's traveled the country and met with other business owners. Now, Jacqueline, you've been around the country. You've interviewed numerous business owners. Uh, you've sat in their businesses and talked to them about all that is happening during COVID. Marlena mentioned something that I want to ask you about, and she was very gracious in it. I asked her if her neighbors support her, and she said, some do, some don't. Um, and she mentioned that people are afraid. Do you sense fear? And how is that fear impacting Americans now? Absolutely. And Marlena has been spot on this entire interview. It's amazing to watch, uh, especially in Michigan. And we were traveling all over the U.S. Uh, leading up to the election as well as after. And with the government overreach and COVID regulations, et cetera. And predominantly in Michigan, the pervading sentiment was fear. I while I was there, I was there for over a month and I participated in spin classes, which is a, a cycling class. They'd move everything outside and the business owners were frustrated that the regulations were constantly changing. Nothing was consistent. Nothing was reliable. Abortion clinics were open. Marijuana clinics were open. Liquor stores were open, but private family owned businesses were not. And so there was this frustration, but an unwillingness to speak openly because clients of those business owners were a split fence. Even though they were partaking in certain services, many people were opposed to business owners speaking out or businesses being open. Some were supportive. And, and so it created a lot of confusion in the environment of what you could say and who you could speak to and how you could operate. So uh, almost a, a neighbor versus neighbor fear? Absolutely. And I think with that too, as a business owner, you're trying to keep your entire client base, you're trying to keep those who support your livelihood, especially when things are so thin and meager and, and business is difficult to begin with. So you don't want to necessarily go out and offend everyone and, and then lose half of your clientele. So there's this hush, hush, hush survival mode that people are operating in. You know, that is a, a that is an environment that authoritarian governments have stepped through throughout human history, you know, free society, people must have the courage to be willing to speak and support the freedoms of those with whom they even disagree. In fact, that's one of the most vital efforts that does need to take place in a free society. And I don't see that in America. I see a lot of arbitrary imposed uh, enforcement 
you know, these laws supposedly apply to everybody, but it's the people that speak out that are getting hammered by government here. So there's kind of an arbitrary enforcement. You mentioned it. Marijuana stores open, liquor stores open, uh, strip teas open, churches closed, small business closed, big box stores with a lot of political clout open. Um, what, what, uh, what is that doing to the fabric? What do you, what, do people have faith in this country right now? Well, <laughs> that's a tricky question. So I don't think that people have faith in the system. But I do think that there is an upswelling of faith in the foundations of what it is our nation is intended to stand for. So there's obviously there's the far progressive left that says America is evil. It is the bane of human existence and it's stopping progress forward. But that extreme uprise of the far left taking over the media, taking over the airwaves, so to speak, is also creating this underswell of citizens such as Marlena, many immigrants. Many of my friends who are immigrants from Russia, from Poland, from Venezuela are the ones who are speaking up and becoming the prophets of our age, so to speak, saying we've lived this before. I, you know, Jonathan Uskatagi says, I saw this, I lived this movie in Spanish and now I'm watching it in English. We're seeing this uprising of citizens who are saying not today, not on my watch. And that's where the hope is coming from. But as far as hope in the institutions, I think that, that that's languishing at this point. You know, um, you, my mother, your grandmother, and you know her story, how she started a small business and, and how government became the impediment to her success because it was answering to big business that wanted to regulate her out of the business because they wanted to protect their market. We've seen now generations, America is one of the most regulated nations on the face of the earth. There are more federal criminal laws than anybody can count. And I mean that literally. They've tried to count them. They can't. And We've grown up, we, I've seen a generation now, and I want to I have you help me bridge this generation gap. You know, I grew up in a pretty independent-minded household where we believe that freedom and individual freedom and the value, the intrinsic value of the individual must be respected by government, and that that freedom was worth even risk, so to speak. In other words, nobody out there could guarantee that I would always be safe always be healthy, always be wealthy, and always get what I want. And it seems to me now we have a, a, a nation that is looking to government to guarantee all of those things rather than protect their freedom to pursue them. Help me understand that. I, I mean, we're even to the point that many in your generation are taught in colleges around the nation that government must protect them from offense which gives government jurisdiction over our thoughts and speech. And that's stunning to me that we are seeing a government that wants to control our thought and our speech. I think there are a number of factors involved, obviously, but two predominant factors. First, communism, and Marlena would be able to speak to this directly, plays on the good intentions of citizens. And ultimately, everybody wants, for the most part, for the most part, but People want their neighbor to be comfortable. They don't want to offend other people. They don't want to hurt other people's feelings. They don't want to create controversy and, and conflict. Whitaker Chambers talks about this a lot in his book, Witness, as he's talking about defecting from communism and his conversion into the Christian faith. So I think that that is a huge issue right now, especially with BLM and the rise of, of woke social justice movements. There's a desire for people to see justice and it's playing on that desire and that good intention. At the same time, you also have an entitlement, but that entitlement is largely coming from a very codependent mindset of people wanting to feel protected and wanting to feel covered. And I personally believe that largely is rising out of a generation of broken homes. You know, this, the millennial generation then you're looking into Gen Z is really the first generation where you have no fault divorce and, and it's very predominant. It's considered the fatherless generation by many people. And so I think a lot of millennials in particular are looking for government to be the father, to come in, to save the day, and to essentially create this well-intended um, type social justice movement that is, that is really a form of manipulation in order to have a totalitarian power grab. And what, what advice do you have for your generation? 
it's the same as Marlena's. It's that we need to be responsible for ourselves and in self-responsibility comes freedom. You know, this generation has, um, and not just this generation, but we've divorced the value of suffering with freedom. Whenever there is true freedom, there's a level of suffering, whether it is long suffering or patience in order to endure towards a more virtuous outcome, or if it's giving up something of your own benefit for the sake of someone else, true freedom comes with some form of suffering. And we no longer have a value for that. And so taking self-responsibility and saying, no, I am a citizen of this nation and I am going to engage with this nation and I'm going to stand up and I'm going to speak regardless of what people around me have to say and really getting over the cancel culture and the fear of wokeism, the fear of being politically incorrect and simply taking responsibility for our lives. How can people uh, learn more about what you guys are doing? AmericanVotersAlliance.org. So American Voters Alliance uh, is in particular a resource to local election integrity groups. So we're building out a member platform. There's a social media component, but there's also a um, video library and resources as well as local legislation, daily updates, things of that nature. So you can really get involved in the election process and get involved at a grassroots level with local groups. Now, I want to close out on a, on a discussion about COVID and the emergency orders and the use of, uh, or the, the emergency orders issued unilaterally by governors across the nation. What is your belief? Was this action necessary to protect public health? Was it necessary at any point in time? And was it used? in order to forward an ideology that, that has harmed the fabric of America? Give me your thoughts about that. Well, that's a very loaded question. I think back in May, all of us were wondering, what is this virus? What is it going to be? How is it going to affect my life? How is it going to affect my loved ones? I know I was really concerned for you and mom. We're across the country from each other. And so there was this, this confusion and this chaos, but that's ultimately the environment in which totalitarian power grabs always happen. And so you see that when there ever there's a disaster or when there is a disaster, it becomes the opportunity for more centralization and to move away from local jurisdiction and local governance. So has that happened in this case? Absolutely. And we're still seeing the ramifications of that as that, um, that lust for power, if you will, is starting to play out in areas of government and in different aspects of policy that have absolutely nothing to do with the virus. So has it been used as a catalyst to forward a progressive centralization? Definitely. And are there other Merlinas out there in the United States who've lost their business, lost their ability, at least for a time period to provide for their families? Many, many. There are those who are standing up and there are those who have simply lost and both are significant and neither are really being covered by the mainstream and America needs to know. All right, Jacqueline. Thank you for joining us. Love you, kiddo. Proud of you. Thank you for joining us on First Principles. I've often mentioned that freedom is not complicated. It's protecting it and keeping it that's becoming increasingly compl complicated. You know, this nation was founded on a radical, I, I almost think of it as a radical middle. It is a belief that we believe in freedom to such great extent that we will stand up for the freedom of others. Now, the gift of, of the knowledge that all of us are created by God with intrinsic value was gifted to a flawed people. We, didn't, we have not done that consistently as a nation. We define certain groups of people as being of less value than others, and that's a wrong. But now in an effort to correct that wrong, we have a movement that is seeking to accomplish the same thing define our rights by whether we're a part of a favored group or not. It is the human condition without a seasoned grace, an understanding that my neighbor is of such value that they can disagree with me and I will defend their right to disagree, that my neighbor is of such value they could even offend me by speaking harshly to me, and I will defend their right of speech as they will defend mine. You see, this equal intrinsic value uh, 
created a civic contract in America that has drawn people from around the world to want to touch these shores because they knew when they got here, they could pursue a freedom, they could pursue a hope, and that all would stand for that liberty that they cherished. Unfortunately, we are losing that in America today. And it starts with attacks upon those who raise their voices and question the authority of government to act in such fashion. Will America stand? Will the left that historically has defended civil liberties, has talked about the Bill of Rights, stand for those whom they disagree? Will conservatives recognize that conservatism doesn't mean running everybody's life, nor that all answers are found in Washington, but that the genius of America is around our kitchen tables, in our places of worship, families coming together, and citizens locally coming together to solve problems which they experience, that all answers and wisdom are not found in Washington, D.C., and that America will stop worshiping government and start worshiping one who is worthy. I'm Phil Klein. Thank you for joining us on First Principles. Thank you so much for staying tuned for First Principles. We look forward to connecting with you again next week.